everybody. Welcome to the talk show. Yay. Woo-hoo. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As everyone's coming in, make sure that you share with your friends. Today, we're going to talk about some really great stuff. So make sure you share, 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 share with friends. Let everybody know. Esther, today is going to be talking about how to set yourself up to buy a home in 2021. If you haven't bought a home yet, if you're still renting, that's there's nothing wrong, there's nothing bad, but you might have a dream or goal to buy a home. So Esther today is going to share with us um, some tips, some strategies, and some some credit tips also on how to how to uh, get set up to buy your home in 2021. So we're going to talk about that stuff. So share, share, share. If this is your first time coming on, thank you. Welcome. Make sure you put first time in the comments. Also, if you are watching this on a replay, make sure you put pound replay. And then that way we know, and you are welcome to comment as you're watching it or that it's already re- recorded. So I'm so excited that you're here. Welcome. Yes, yes. So for those who don't know, my name is Connie Rivera and I am a consultant with um, Heart Body Naturals. And I am also a business coach and a mom of four beautiful kids, five beautiful, five. Oh my God. The fifth one's going to be like, what? Who, who's number five? This she didn't count. Five beautiful kids. And, um, you know, I'm here talking about all the different things that we all go through as human beings, as moms, um, and what matters to us. So that's me. I'm Connie. And I'm Esther Noeli. I have, I'm a mommy too. I'm a mommy of one. I also, I'm a real estate broker. So today we'll be talking about that. I am also part of the Heart Body Naturals company that, that um, and then a few other companies that also deal with health. Um, but I am so excited to be talking about today my real estate broker portion of my business. I'm so excited to share all these homeownership ideas and some strategies that um, some people in our communities think that they that because they have low incomes that they can't buy, but you can. There's special programs. So learn about all that. that. Uh, remember to share this video and if you're seeing it in replay put hashtag replay and if you have any questions on the information i will be giving please ask questions um and we can help you um out we can do a one-on-one because um this is general and everybody's situation is different absolutely renting is fine renting if you don't want to own there's nothing wrong We, we also do rentals and we help people get rentals as well so Everybody's situation is different, but I don't want you have to make the decision that you can't buy. Not that your society is telling you that because of who you are and what you do, you can't own a home. That's no, right. You know, tampoco. No, you can own a home. Yes. So and that's we'll, just we'll, getting, we'll be getting into a lot of detail with that. But but first and foremost, this is what episode are we on on our Happy Healthy Mommy Talk Show? Number nine. Number episode nine. nine. So I want to tell you we have a couple of people here. So I have Laura Laura's here, and she's like, I'm here until my phone dies, and I'm going to rewatch it later. So thank you so much for watching, Laura. And then we have Char. Char's like, hey, ladies, how are you? So I want to acknowledge who's in the house. So thank you so much for everyone for being here. Um, Yeah. I want to cover a couple of things, Esther. Next week, yeah. we're going to, next week Wednesday at twelve thirty, we're going to talk about how to do a vision board, how to put your vision together and dream really big. Um, and I'm going to invite Laura out with us because she was like, "Yes, I love vision boards." So I'm just like, "Yes, I me too." So yes. I'm gonna and I'm gonna share some resources in the group as well. Um, I'll probably yeah, I'll probably put it in the group today. I'll put it today because I already have those already prepared for how to uh, create your vision board. So I'm gonna do that. That'll be next week, the 23rd. 23rd. And then the 23rd at 7 p.m., we're going to spin the wheel in our group, Happy Healthy Mommy. If you haven't joined our group, Happy Healthy Mommy, make sure you join our group. There, We are there supporting the health, your physical health, your mental health, and your financial health. Um, mm-hmm. We also have a walking group acknowledging our 10K walkers, um, our 15K walkers. We're going to acknowledge our big walkers. Last time we had like someone that walked 16,000 steps. Oh my God, that was yeah. so cool. 
That's awesome. So we're going to do that next week, Wednesday, and that's going to be our last episode for 2020. And we're going to start season two in 2021. So it'll be season two. So that'll be our last episode, episode number 10. And then we're going to start season two in 2021. So excited. This is so much yeah. fun. I love it. I love it. So oh, well, we have a YouTube channel too that you can uh, share with, you know, subscribe to it, please. So we'll be yes. putting that on there. We want subscribers for that YouTube channel. Absolutely. And I'll make sure to put mm -hmm. the link in the comments as well um, yeah. for the YouTube channel. I can't mm -hmm. put it without the sound right now, but I'm going to put it in. Yeah. Um, but make sure you subscribe. We are on every every Wednesday when we broadcast, we broadcast live on Facebook, live in our group, Happy Healthy Mommy. So you get the inside immediately, our Happy Healthy Mommies, right? And then we are also live on Facebook, on uh, YouTube. So yes. we are live on YouTube. When you ask questions when we're live, we're able to answer them instantly. So please, yes, we are here for you. We're here to support you and to uh, offer ourselves as a resource. Um, so I'm excited, Esther. Yeah, so excited, so excited um, to start with you guys. Uh, a little bit, I mean, about Happy Healthy Mommy, our, our mission. Remember, I always like to start with our mission. Our mission is to empower women and all mommies in their mental, physical, and financial health, uh, you know, to help them live a happier life. So that's what we're trying to trying to start here. Because I mean, we're 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 a startup. We're barely starting up, so it's never too late to join. We like to talk about different taboos. We like to make sure that you put yourself first. That and it's okay to do that because sometimes it's very hard as a mommy. And as a multitasking person to put yourself first. And we're here to say that it's okay to put yourself first. So, so excited. Um, our, please join our walking club. It's so much fun. Share our episodes. We're trying to bring good information out here to this positive information to this crazy world we're living in. <laughs> so I'm so excited to get started with that. Right, Connie? Absolutely. And like, um, we're both absolutely committed that uh, all mommies everywhere live their best life ever, whatever that looks like. And we're here to support yes. that. Yes, we are. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and get started. I want to get started with the keys to the home ownership portion of our. Oh, and then, oh, kind of, we forgot. Um, we will be, we're kind of mentioned about HBN Naturals. And today we'll be talking about a, a product. Yes. What product was that? Um, today we're going to talk about the slimmer. And the reason why I want to talk about the slimmer is because, um, so I came across something that was really super cool, right? So the slimmer, one of the things that the slimmer does is it helps reduce stress eating. The slimmer product, this is the slimmer product, this slimmer product with HBN Naturals, and I'll make sure to put the link in the bio. This one is a seven day supply. It usually comes in a, um, a, full 30 day supply. Um, 20. huh? Oh, 28. 28. Mm -hmm. The big one is so 28, 28 day supply. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So the big one is a 28. Okay, great. So this one helps with, um, it helps level off your, and uh, your cortisol levels. So it helps you not eat so much. Um, and then it also decreases your appetite. I'm going to go ahead and drop my my ringy dingies. It also helps reduce your appetite and it also promotes gut health. So the, this uh, slimmer um, in January, and we're going to start promoting this also is, I know that we have gone through a whole lot of things, especially with the quarantine. I know that we're going through a whole bunch of things, especially with the quarantine, particularly the quarantine 19. Everybody knows about it. Some people talk about it. Some people don't. We. Some people have lost weight. Some people have gained weight. Most people have gained weight, um, especially stress eating. Right. So we're going to talk about in January. We're going to go ahead. Go ahead and uh, enjoy your family. Have some fun. And then January, we're going to start a health, a um, healthy journey, starting with our slimmer. So we're going to. I'm going to talk about this even more next week, so that you can get the product. And we're going to do a 90 day. 90 day reset. And I know it's going to be longer, but we're here to support. You don't yeah. have to, every day. We're not going to be on here like harassing you or anything like that, but it's, uh, it's an accountability. Yes, 
<laughs> it's an accountability to really create like what's available for you. Um, and I'm going to have some secret, super, super secret recipes on how to use the slimmer so that you can powerfully drink it. I have a recipe that you can set it up for a week and then you can drink it for the week and not have to worry about it every day. So yes. it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome. So that is the slimmer product. I'm gonna put the link in the bio. And I'm also gonna put the invitation for the 90 day, the 90 day slim down. And there's also an opportunity with the slim down challenge that we're doing to win, to win in this challenge, $500. Mm -hmm. And your competition is no one else except yourself. Yes. Yes. So this is exciting. So I'm going to put it's that in. You do you get. It's a you do you get competition. You do, that's right. You do you get. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's what we have. So I'm super excited. I'm going to put that in the group. So Esther, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go behind the scenes. I'm going to yeah. run the, I'm going to run the PowerPoints for you mm -hmm. and I'm going to let you do your thing. So thank you so much, Esther, for sharing yeah. yourself and your expertise as a realtor. realtor. Yeah. Uh, sure. And sharing how to get the keys to homeownership. Thank you, Esther. Yes, no problem. All right, ladies and gents, get ready. Um, get your notes out. Note takers are money makers <laughs> and money savers. So we are talking today about the keys to home ownership. I am Esther Gonzalez. I'm with Solaris Real Estate. I've been a real estate broker a little bit over four years. I know I will always remember how many years I've been with a real estate broker because I was pregnant with my son when I started taking the classes for real estate. So my real estate, my son is now four years old in July. He turned July 23rd. So I know I've been with them a little bit over. I was pregnant. Um pretty much almost due and i got my real estate broker license may 27th the sunday before my baby shower and my son was born july 23rd so i have a lot of not lot of knowledge i've been with solaris i started with a different company right now i'm with solaris great company um and they bring over 10 years of experience of real estate brokerage so every time we're learning and we're learning more you know so um Go ahead, change it. Mm -hmm. We learn more as you know, as time goes by, you learn, you learn, you start making different relationships with lenders, and different things happen to you that you take everything that happens to you, good or bad, you have to take it as a learning. So I've had a lot of lessons, and but those lessons have taught me how to become a better realtor, a better person in life as well. Okay, so I want to thank you first. You're taking the first step by watching this video. Um, it's attending the seminar, and this is your first step towards home ownership because you need to start somewhere. I know so, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not going to do anything. I want to save money, save money, save money. Then an emergency happens, and they have to use that money they saved. And if you don't start talking to somebody, whether it be a realtor or a lender, um, you're never going to know what steps you need to start your real estate process. So again, today we're going to be mainly um, talking to first time home buyers, but I will address when we get to the different slides, I'll address investing and rentals as well. But today we are addressing to first time home buyers. So thank you. And we, this is your first step by watching the rest, this whole video towards home ownership. Okay. So today's seminar, the five keys to qualifying for home ownership. That's what we're going to talk about. And what determines and affects your credit score and the benefits of an FHA loan. These are all stuff that's very important because your credit score is your money. Since I was young, my mom has um, in focus in me. A lot of people I mean don't, but my mom has in focus in me that your credit is your money. So you need to protect your credit with with everything because that's what's going to determine your pretty much your interest rate and every point less your interest rate is you're saving thousands of dollars okay and then and then an fha loan versus a convention loan that some people don't understand the difference between the loans and they get scared of trying to get an fha loan but but sometimes a conventional loan it's 
it's pretty much like an FHA loan unless you're going to be giving 20% down, okay? Then you're going to be giving 20% down, and that's definitely conventional. You're not even going to have to go FHA. But we will get into that a little bit later on. So for now, we're going to start with the five keys to, to becoming a homeowner. Um, most importantly, we want to arm you with all the information you need to be an informed and intelligent home purchase decision. Um, I know some people are, they just want to buy, want to buy. That's one lesson I learned. I had a client that just wanted to buy, want to buy. And my problem is that I'm always trying to help my clients get the best rate, the best amount of, um, money back from the state, you know, or help that we can get them. But that sometimes might mean that it's a longer process because that might mean that it's, um, you might have to, you know, do some more things, work on your credit, pick up your score, stuff like that. So, but sometimes if you want to buy real quick, well, then we got lenders that can do that too. You're just, your interest rate might be a little bit higher. Okay. So go ahead. Okay. And then we want the benefits of being a homeowner. Okay. These are the benefits. Income tax benefit on property taxes and interest paid. So what does that mean? That means that on your taxes, when you go to your accountant or your H&R block or your wherever you do your taxes at, the, the interest paid that will all benefit you to lower your taxes. Stability. What do we mean by stability? Well, sometimes when we rent, sometimes the, old, the landlord will come and tell us, you know what? I give us a 30 day notice and be like, you know, I need you to move out because I have some new family members coming in or I got to fix something, you know, you're not really, that's not really your home home. Okay. Cause different situations can happen and it might cause for them to kick you out of your home. Right. Equity. Another great point of being a homeowner is equity. So, and retirement and investment, these are all kind of combine together. So when you buy a home, you're putting, you're paying your mortgage. So you're paying towards to towards owing less money, right? So that way, eventually the home is going to be yours and you're just going to have to pay the taxes and insurance on it and it'll be completely yours. And if something comes up for equity purposes, let's say in five, 10 or in 10 years, and you're like, Oh, you know what? I just lost my job. We ran the credit cards. Well, your home owns more. Maybe you could refinance, take some money out and pay all your debt. So you don't have high interest rates on your credit card, or you can cover your mortgage for a few months while you get, while you get your money settled back up or in the future where you've paid it all off. Right. And finally you're like, Oh, that's it. I want to go retire to, to Hawaii. I mean, Hawaii is very expensive, but you know, I want to go retire to Mexico, to Cancun. I want a little, you know, just retire over there. Well, then you could just sell your house and use that money. Some people use, get homes for, per children they have, and then they use that money to help them pay to school, you know, rent out the homes because like, obviously not everybody does have the opportunity to buy a home right away. Some people need to rent first and then they can buy. And those are all part of, these are all the benefits of being a homeowner because being a homeowner has, gives a lot of responsibility to you, but it gives you a lot of benefits as well. Go on to the next one. So now we're going to do a little equation. Renting versus buying. Okay, like, so we used to do this at $700. We're doing that $900 per month of rental. And this, this is very low because, I mean, I know, you know, some you might pay $1,200, $1,300, $1,300, $1,500. I mean, there's rents $2,000 nowadays where we live. So, but we're doing, we're being a little bit, you know, put in a little lower just for example purposes. So we did like $900 per month. And then that every year you have a 5% increase in your rent. That's going to go up a little bit because every year the style of living, the life of living is more expensive. So after five years, you have paid $54,000 in rent and you have made zero equity. Zero equity. Okay. So again, and I, you're, you're going to say, oh, well, mortgage is going to be more than 900. Yes, it is. It will be more. But you're making equity. You're investing in your future. And it depends where you want to live. There are homes that are inexpensive that your mortgage can be $9,000 per rent. I mean, but I mean, like I said, some of us are now paying 
$1,200 of rent. So I think I'm going to be updating this slide around I'm putting $1,200. So you could see after five years paying $1,200, how much you have paid and made zero equity. Zero. Okay. So just think about that. That's just, this, this slide is a food for thought slide where it makes you realize like how much money has come out of your pocket just for rent. And, but like I said, some people just want to rent because they don't want to deal if something breaks down if something goes like that. But for that, you also can have a home warranty. Just a little FYI, home warranty covers your breakdowns. But okay, remember that food for thought. So what are the five keys to home ownership? So key one, job stability. You have to have a job. You don't have a job for more than two years, done your taxes for two years in the same industry. Yeah, you're not going to be able to buy a home. So that's very important. Job stability is number one, number one for to buy a home, okay? Number two, credit history and score. Not only do they want a, a nicer score, but they wanna make sure you're making your payments on time. So next time you think, if you're gonna make your T-Mobile payment late, ah, it's okay, I could pay it tomorrow. Nope, that affects your credit score. If you're gonna pay your ComEd bill a day or two late, ah, I can't go today or I can't pay it. Um, nope, you go pay it because that's gonna affect your credit score. Your little credit cards, Target, Victoria's Secret Women, um, JCPenney, all those little credit cards, you need to pay them on time. That affects your credit score, okay? Another ownership is your valuable assets. So savings, yes. You're not gonna get a home for free. You're gonna have to put some money down. Um, I have been fortunate enough to that you don't have to put a lot of money down. Sometimes, sometimes you might not even have to put some money down if you buy a home that's a hundred thousand or hundred forty thousand. But the bank still wants to see some some they want to see money in your account because they want to know if something happens, you have two three months of mortgage to pay them. Okay, and again, that's why sometimes they'll have the PMI, which is your mortgage insurance that we'll talk about later. But a valuable essence income to debt if. The number one thing I tell my clients is don't go out and buy a car. Buy your house first and then buy a car. If you're qualifying in the process qualifying of, of already buying a like or wanting to own a house, first buy your house and then you buy your car. Because when you buy a car, they don't take the house into consideration as much. So but when you buy a house, if you own a car, that's your debt. So your income, how they qualify you on how much you're going to qualify for. It's all the money you make, which is your income, versus the debt, which is what you owe, what you owe on your credit cards, if you owe a car, anything you owe that you use in your name and use your social, it's going to show up on your credit report, okay? Number five, the last key is home qualification factors, and we're going to discuss those in detail, each one. So go ahead, next one. Job stability. So again, number one factor to owning a house. The concerns, you have to have been at your job more than two years, okay? So, you know, that's a last thing, but we're, we'll fix that. Uh, so your job history has to have more two years. Multiple job changes, um, oh no, yeah, concerns. If you've been there less than two years, I'm like, that's a less than sign. Then that's not sometimes, some brokers will will take that not as good, and other brokers that I just found out will will give you will qualify you, but you're gonna have a higher interest rate, much higher interest rate, and you won't qualify for some of the first time home buyer programs. Um, multiple job changes, so no, you have to have a steady job, income stability, and multiple employments uh, gaps. So if, if you like have a job for six months and then stop working and have another job, that's uh, those are big no nos. Those are concerns. Next one. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna go into our credit and score. Credit score definition. So three digit score typically ranges from 350, which is very bad, to 850, which is super excellent. I've never met anybody with an 850. Um, 
You may purchase your score from each of the three credit bureaus, or you can purchase your FICO score from myfico.com. That one will give you an accurate score. There are other ones like Credit Karma out there, a few other ones, uh, but those sometimes the banks don't use those and those can be off. I found somebody that was off by like 25 points. And that's a big deal because that means money out of your pocket. Um, so again, your score can be anywhere from 350, which is bad, to 850, which is good. We want the higher the better. For first time home buyer programs, we want your score to be over a 660. Okay, there are some for 640, but the majority is 660 credit score for a first time home buyer. Now, if you have a low credit score, you're looking at this video and say, Esther, well, I have a low credit score, so there's no way I could buy that. No, you reach out to me and I will put you with the right people that will help you get your credit score up so you get the best rates and the best um, best information. I mean, I work with a few ones. One of them is Credit X, Joanna. She's really awesome. I'm, I'm hoping to bring her on the show. You know, um, so we have different people we work with that will help you get your credit up. But if you don't start today or when you're watching this video, then you're never going to start. You're never going to be able to buy. And if you're okay with that, well, then there's something I can do about it. But I want you to have the opportunity that if you do want to buy, that you're preparing yourself. And yes, you have to have patience. Patience pays. If you're not patient, you're going to pay more for your property. Patient pays. So I had one person um took her 13 months but after 13 months she was able to buy her home you know which we were so happy with and she got the best rate she got good good first time home buyer programs so and she was patient okay so patient pays but if you want to buy right away because you want to move out then we will help you as well used to objectively determine credit worthiness which is your myfico.com your credit score identifies the likelihood of you repaying your debt. That's what the bank thinks about your, why do you think it's so important to the bank? Because it identifies the likelihood of you repaying your job. So yes, your credit score is determined by this. Why I'm telling you, your payment history, 35% that you pay your payments on time determines your credit score. So that's very important for you to pay your payments on time. 30% how much debt you currently have. That's why it's good not to owe money when you're trying to buy a house. Try to pay as much debt off as possible without dipping into your savings. It's from what you're currently making. So that's pretty much right there. What is that? 65% of your credit score is determined by your payment history and how much debt you have. Bam, right there. Very important. Pay your payments on time, even if it's little credit cards. 15% length of time you have with your credit. So unfortunately, some people they're like, well, I don't owe anything, but then that means they don't have no credit either because they never, they buy everything cash, which is great for your pocket, but not for your credit. So what you can do like, cause you're like, oh, I don't like to, oh, I don't want to pay interest. We're not telling you to do that either. We want you to pay your credit card off at the end. Um, so 15%, go back to the other one still. I'm on the percentages. No, back, back, back. You went to a head girl. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, go back. Right there. Yes, that one. Thank you. Um, so again, you know, I lost my train of talk. But 15%, the length of time you have your credit score. So 15, that means that if you bought everything cash, but you don't have the length of time. So that's 15%, you know, that's going to cost on your point. That's sometimes people with no credit. When they say no credit, that's the means because they buy everything cash. So then we have to establish credit and we can help you establish credit with different op ways of doing it with our partners that we have. Uh, so 10% number of recent inquiries. So that's only 10%. You're like, oh, I don't want you to ru run my credit, run my credit. I'm like, it's not a lot of points unless you're checking it for every little thing, then yes. But it's 10% is like, uh, like if you're going to take, if you took out 10 credit cards, well, we don't suggest that either. Cause then that's going to, they're going to run your credit 10 times and that's going to bring your score down. Um, and then the other, the final 10% is a number of accounts with balances, amount old versus credit limit type of credit. So we always try to 
suggest you stay under 50% of what your credit limit is. So if your credit card is like 3000, try not to go over 1500 and pay it right away. Okay. So everybody got that. Yay. Okay. Now next. So years to qualify for learn if you experience, I hope everybody, maybe everybody listening to me is, has a perfect credit, has never experienced anything, but you know, there was tough times sometime. And some of us went through some foreclosures. Some of us went through a short sale. Others went through bankruptcies, different things. So right here is a list letting you know that if you had a foreclosure, you think you can't buy again. Er, you're wrong. You can't buy again. And FHA, three years, conventional, seven years. Uh, short sale, uh, FHA, three years, conventional, two to four, depending on every situation is different again. And bankruptcy, seven and 11, you can do, after two years, you can buy again a chapter 13 after one year with FHA. Conventional is a little longer. But, <coughs> sorry. Don't think because you, you made some mistakes in the past. Yeah, that affects your future, but it's not irreparable, okay? You can succeed and you can become a homeowner even if you made some mistakes in the past. I know, I made mistakes in the past and look, I own my home now, okay? Um, so yeah, don't don't let anybody tell you, oh, well, this happened to you, now you're never gonna be able to buy a home. Nope, don't let anybody put you down. You can do it, you can buy a home and you can make your dreams come true, okay? So next. So key number three, to buy them available assets. Remember, you need money though. You do need money to buy a home. Down payment, closing costs, and reserves. So savings must be documented. Okay. In other words, you can't have your money under the couch or not under the couch, right? In the colchones, in the um, <coughs> under the mattress. And if you do, you need to start putting it into your account little by little. So that way when you're ready to buy, we'll instruct you on how to do that. We'll help you out. So you cannot borrow down payment funds. Nobody can lend you, be like, oh yeah, I'll lend you. And then you put, no. Gift from a family member is accepted. If somebody like your mom or your dad, like, I'll help you buy your home. If it's if you need if you need two thousand dollars, I'll gift you the two thousand dollars. And that's acceptable. Okay, and you'll be surprised. There are a lot of people that will be out there to help you if it's for you to move forward and you grow. There's still a lot of good people out there that would help you, okay? And if not, we can help you. We can help you find some down payment assistant programs and work with other stuff. Um, and then we also, as realtors, we have, sometimes we help with the sellers negotiate. If it's an FHA loan, they can negotiate up to 6%, conventional 3% towards your closing costs. So that's less money out of your pocket at closing that you can use towards maybe fixing the home, buying your furniture. So again, realtors, we're here to help you. We're, our service is to help you achieve your dream of becoming a homeowner. That's what we're here for. Okay, what's the next one? Key number four, income and debts. Okay, this matters. This matters. If you have a $700 note, car note, that's going to take away from you from what you would qualify for your home. Remember that. So, but it's very important they want you want to count as income. Base salary or your hourly wage, that's your income. If you if they pay you commission and bonuses, they're averaged over 2 years, but that's income. Child support as long as the child is under 16, that counts as income. You got a second job, that counts as income. Interest and dividends income that counts as income. Social security, disability, that counts as income. So if you're trying to buy a home and with your mom and you know she's on social security and disability, her income will help you. Maybe she could be a co-signer and sign because yes, I know some of us do some side jobs that work, that we get paid cash. That does not count as income because it's not reported. If, if, if you reported on your taxes, then we can count it as income as well. Okay. So very important. Next one. Home call. Okay. So now 
we qualified you to buy a home. Now we're in the process of buying a home. The next part process is the appraisal. Don't worry about the value of the home because the bank is going to make sure, the bank and us as realtors, we make sure that you're getting the right value for that home and that it appraises out. But the bank will send an appraisal because they're not going to give you a loan without an appraisal to make sure the home is worth what you're buying it for. Okay. And then a home inspection, that's for your eyes only to see what you're getting yourself into with the new home you're going to purchase. So your advocate to identify problems with home and a great to, way to learn about your home into regards of all new home, all homes are going to have something to do with even new construction, you know, something can go. So um, not necessarily new construction, right? But like a newer construction, one that's only 10 years old, I'm talking about, you know, you still want to try to have the home inspection to make sure everything was taken care of properly. Because at the end of the day, the homeowners, who the owners are, let some owner homeowners take care of their homes better than others. So we always recommend a home inspection. It's not required. We just do recommend it. And it's your choice if you want to get one or not. Mm -hmm. All right. Now let's talk about loans, loans and their, and what they're about. So this is the benefit of an FHA loan. Okay. It's easier to qualify. That's why a lot of people go with FHA because it has less stand, not, not less standards, but less qualification factors. So FHA HUD insures the loan. So that's why it's an easier loan as we call it. It does have mortgage insurance, which means it can be more affordable, less than perfect credit. So your credit doesn't have to be a 640. It could be a 600 or a 580 if you really want to buy. But then, like I said, we try to get to 640 so we can help you qualify for some programs. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you did have bankruptcy, then after two years, it'll be discharged. I mean, I mean, if after two years you discharge it, you can buy with this FHA loan. And it has a low down payment. That's why a lot of people go with FHA over conventional because of the lower down payment of three and a half percent. And then seller can help up to six percent of sales price for closing costs and or interest buy down. Uh, and then funds can come from savings or gift from the family. So the FHA, like I said, they have a little bit more. Go to the next one. So now you have your monthly average payment ca uh, calculation. So if you make twenty eight hundred dollars a month, and you're they're gonna they're gonna give you a debt to income ratio of forty three percent, your monthly payment is gonna be one thousand two hundred and eighteen. This means I know this is a lot of numbers, but this more means that. Which is because they, they they put it backwards. Okay, that's fine. Um, that if you, so this is how the bank is seeing it. Your lender, the person that's going to let you know how much you qualify for, that we work with. So you're qualified for a hundred and fifty thousand dollar home for sale. Okay, go to the next one. Did you skip one, Connie? I better go back. I think you skipped one, girl. That's what's missing. That one. Yes, this one. Okay, yeah, that's the one. So this is where we start first. That's why you're probably like, what's gross income? So let's say you make $34,000 a year. They divide that by 12 months. Your gross monthly income is about $28,33, right? And then let's say your debt to income ratio is that, that you have, they're estimating your debt can be up to $14,620 per year, 43%, which is the max preferred. So if you spend more than that, hmm, you got to spend less than that, okay? Or that amount. So this is how they determine your monthly income is you divide what you make per year by 12 months. And then that's how they get the, and that's how you do the 43% is what you spend versus what you make. You divide that. And that's how they get the 43%, which is pretty much the max. I mean, sometimes they'll do 40, 45, but 43 is the max that they lenders prefer to see. So now go to the next one. Now this one is where this is how they determine your debt to income is so important because this is how they determine how much the bank thinks you can afford to pay for that house a month, which is only 1218. So that's a $150,000 home. They still, we, they still do sell $150,000 home, you know, maybe not on certain parts of the city, but other parts they do. And in the nice, some nice suburbs, I mean, my client bought his home for 153,000 and he loves it. Um, 
So your estimated monthly payment is twelve eighteen. So they estimated one hundred fifty thousand. Now go to the next one. So then monthly average payment calculator. Now, right, that's what they're determining. But if you have a car payment, for example, and then because your car payment, they will take that out, your car payment. So now you only qualify, when you qualify before for $12.19 they thought, but you got a car payment, that's, that's $350. And I've seen some car payments for five seven hundred. Now the only thing you can afford eight hundred and sixty eight dollars a month for your for your house. So now your house instead of getting one hundred fifty thousand, you're gonna get a seventy five thousand dollar home. Okay, that's why it's so important not to get into any debt if you're trying to purchase a home. Or we have some people that had they didn't know that, so they bought a car and they're like, okay, so they're right now they're in the process of paying off their car so that way they can qualify for the home. Okay. So, and again, every situation is different. We can work on it. Um, this, we like to show, I like to show this slide as an example. Uh, it was an example of, of one of our clients that bought a home, right? So they bought the home for $329,000. They gave down three and a half percent. Their interest rate was 3%. Yes, I know it seems low, but right now that's where they're at. That's why there's, it's a buyer's market. This is the time to buy. Because the interest rate, I got somebody who just closed 2.625. That's amazing. So this is a buyer's market. Call us up. We can help you. We could put a plan in place if you really want to buy. Number of years, 30 years. Okay. That's the normal. And then this particular home, the taxes were like $3,900, $3,870. And then we always put for insurance monthly an extra 100 bucks, And that's on the high end. There's cheaper insurances. Uh, so your total estimated payment for this home is $1,898. So $1,900. And you're buying a $329,000 home. Isn't that amazing? And that's and that's all I mean. But homes, there's some homes for two fifty, dollars So your payment's going to be less than $1,800. $1, maybe like $1,500, $1,500, $1, dollars right now. I mean, and if you're paying for rent a thousand, thousand two hundred, you're gonna get a whole home for three hundred dollars more a month. Let's go, people! Come on, we can do this. We can purchase your home. Okay, we can help you purchase a home. So give us a call, and we will help you get started. But the first step in purchasing a home is working with your real estate agent. Okay. We have we bring real estate experience to you. We have a code of ethics that we have to abide by. We have local community knowledge. We provide listings in the in the area you want, or we work with you depending on what you can qualify for. Go back, prepare offers and negotiations. Uh, you know, making your home a reality. That's what we're here for. Um, I will do an investment seminar as well, but I couldn't do it all in one in one show. Uh, but because for investing, I prefer to do that. I can do a general one, but it's really, really fast because everybody's investing is different. Because I know last time on our episode, they asked about investment and we do work with investors. I have investors I work with. Um, so if you're interested in investing, again, call me up. So go to the next one now. Uh, this is my final one. I want to thank you for looking at my video today on how to you the road to your home ownership, right? My name is Esther Norley. Again, I'm a licensed real estate broker. That's my phone number and email, 773-490-2614. And that's my email. And we're here to help you. Again, for investing, and if you want to be an investor, um, I can help you. But I think that's a one-on-one -on -one conversation that we can do like a Zoom call or a WhatsApp call. And we can handle it uh, because there's different levels of investing. And I, I would need to talk to you personally to, to find out what um, investment opportunity you want to do. So, again, thank you for listening to our video. Uh, this is our Happy Healthy Mommy talk show. Uh, I'm going to bring Connie back on. But one more thing before it is before we leave is that this is my saying. I am here. Um, I am here to help you make the road to your dream dream home a reality. 
So I am here to help you guys do that. Um, so I, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Connie, for letting me talk about this whole ownership. Thank you so much, Esther. Thank you. So I, I haven't seen any questions in the, wait, hold on. I see one comment. What if you're, uh, here's a question uh, that Shar had. What if you're, you were at your job for 17 years and you were furloughed and just got a new job? Is it, um, I would have a couple of questions. Is it in the same industry, Char? So that would be a question. So the yeah. first question we'd ask is, is in the same industry? Mm -hmm. um, what would because be I know like for, for example, a lender wants somebody like, you know, for us women, because sometimes we have a job and then we get pregnant and then we just continue our job because we want to be a stay at home mom for one or two years. And then we go back uh, to, to back into the workforce after that time, because necessity or because we want to go back <laughs> um, that that's acceptable gap because we have a reason why we did it. So it just depends um, if you're a furloughed, that's the reason. Now, are you in the same industry or are you doing a different industry? So it, that um, it just, it just depends on, on that particular situation. And I, I could, you could private message me that answer and then I'll, I'll, I'll give you a call sure. But yeah, the, I mean, it's a possibility. I'm going to say yes, but it depends on the, on the type of job and the reason. Well, furloughed is furloughed. I mean, you can't do nothing about that, but, yeah. um, but um, if it's in the same industry, then I, I will definitely have to say yes, especially right now. I think lenders understood about COVID. The only thing I do know for sure is that like one of my clients got, um, well, I guess furloughed, but then, or uh, she got laid off. She got laid off actually, but they were still paying her, but she had to return to work in order to, to, we can close on her condo. Yeah. So you have to be physically working for them to close for the bank to give you the loan. So if you're not physically working, they won't give you the loan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, and you can't, um, your gaps have to be logically explained. Yeah, logically explain yes. Mm -hmm. So it's a possibility that it's a yes, but until I talk and know more exact things, um, that will that'll give us a better a better idea, Char. Okay. Yes. So the my favorite answer to that question would be, it depends. Oh, I know. <laughs> it depends, and let's talk. <laughs> yeah. So um, I mean, right now. Thank you. Um, I appreciate everybody. We'll be doing. I'll be doing another home buyer seminar. I'm gonna do one uh, per quarter, just to to re refresh on it. You know. Absolutely. So thank you so much, Esther. So I'm going to put our group up again for the happy, uh, the yeah. happy healthy mommy. So it, make sure you join our group. We are out. We are here to be a support to help and um, to help you. Oh, hold on. Then. Oh, that's, that's cool. That's next week. Oh, that's next week. Next week. <laughs> <laughs> Here is our link to um to purchase the uh the skinny. So I wanted to make sure yes. that I promoted that as well, the slimmer. So here is the link for the slimmer. Um and it and is and then I was thinking about it, Connie. I'm sorry, but I think next week, you you know, that way you could mentally prepare us for January next week, you could give us an idea of that recipe and stuff. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. I'm going to talk about the recipe. We're going to talk about a vision board. We're going to talk about the recipe. We're going to put this out here and we're going to create a group um, for those people that are interested in losing those COVID-19 plus. Yeah. Cause I, I love it. I definitely, I love it. you know, I you can get paid it. dollars per pound. Mm -hmm. so you don't have to necessarily do like a whole massive 50 pounds. You can lose 20 pounds and get paid dollar per pounds. Would you like to get paid dollar per pounds? Who's yeah. paying dollar per pounds? There's a challenge out there. And I want to, I want to show you and teach you and give you the resources and tools to achieve the challenge. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to leave you by yourself. So that's what we're creating. So we're doing that next week. Yeah. I'm excited. This is going to be super great. I'm, you know, what, Esther, I have to tell you, I, there's a whole lot of conversations about 2020, right? There is a conversation where it's like F 2020, right? There's a whole song out there. that's called F 2020, right? There, there is, it's like F 2020, you know, you know, I'm done with you. Like there's a whole song out there, right? I am. I'm done with 2020, but I mean, but, I think it has taught us a lot. 
2020 has taught me so much. So I cannot say that I don't, um, it's sad what the things have happened. And I've never known myself or you to be this resilient. You know, sometimes we pray for God to give us patience. Mm -hmm. It's like, God, give me the patience. And it's like, how do you know you have patience? At least it's tested. Yes. So 2020 was the year of the test. <laughs> my marriage got tested. My mental health got tested. My physical nest got tested. My finances got tested. My friendships got tested. My relationships with family members got tested with everything that was going on, not just with COVID, not just with quarantine, with all the different, with the election, with, um, with every, like just all the different race wars and everything that's been happening. So I asked for patience and I was tested. And I have to say that I'm so, I'm glad for everything that happened in 2020 and I'm so looking forward to 2021. Yeah. Let us, let's go into next week looking at what can we create? This is the time, right? Not like right now, let's start imagining mm -hmm. like, if you can have anything, what would that look like for 2021? Like, <laughs> so that's all I have to say. So, all right. I'm I love it. I love it. I love it. So again, everybody, hashtag happy, healthy mommy club, hashtag peace, love, and harmony, hashtag paz, amor, y armonia for everybody. We love you. We appreciate you. We thank you for tuning in to our happy, healthy mommy talk show episode nine, 10, 10. Oh my God. We're in episode 10. I thought you said nine earlier. No, nine, nine. We're coming up to 10. Nine. Bye everybody. Don't forget to share or press hashtag replay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.